Okay, hello everyone, it's Kirsten here. Um, I'll start this presentation out just by saying Happy National Dental Hygiene Week to all of my classmates and professors. So obviously our National Dental Hygiene Week presentation is going to look a little bit different than originally planned, but we hope you enjoy it nonetheless. So the topic of this presentation is maintaining oral health during cancer treatment. So we had originally planned to set up some kind of booth with pamphlets or set up a presentation time at the Cross Cancer Institute to talk about how to maintain oral health during cancer treatment. The goal was to deliver oral health education and raise awareness about the side effects that can occur secondary to cancer treatment and how to manage some of these side effects. The other goal was to educate people and raise awareness about how dental hygiene can play a larger role than people would expect during a cancer journey. So here's a nice picture of the cross um, where we've all been at some point over the dental hygiene program. Okay, so during the rest of the presentation, I'll just go through some of the information we were going to deliver to the population at the Cross Cancer Institute. Um, first of all, I want to talk about how oral health is vital for overall health. This is an important point because often people are not aware of how important maintaining a healthy mouth is regularly and nonetheless during cancer treatment. So we'll start off with the timeline here, just going through what steps an individual can take while receiving treatment for cancer in order to ensure optimal oral health. So we'll start with before treatment here. One of the best things you can do prior to receiving cancer treatment is to book an appointment with your dental hygienist and dentist to get the proper assessments, treatment, and oral health education. The educational piece will include what to expect as far as oral side effects and how to best manage these, which we will talk about in the next slide here. So dream treatment. To manage and treat side effects that may occur during treatment for cancer, there are certain home care techniques that should be followed. And these include brushing your teeth two times a day for two minutes each time, using a soft bristled toothbrush and a high concentration fluoride toothpaste. And the reason, the reason for the high fluoride concentration of a toothpaste is because often dry mouth is a side effect of cancer treatment, therefore making our teeth much more prone to cavities. The high fluoride toothpaste can combat these cavities. You should also be using an alcohol-free mouth rinse and another option is to ask your dental professional about chlorhexidine. These tactics will decrease the bacteria load in your mouth. So now we'll discuss some things about after receiving cancer treatment. So a good thing to know is that it is not uncommon for side effects to still be present. Some things you can do during this stage to make sure your oral health is maintained include continuing your oral hygiene routine, while integrating or continuing cleaning between your teeth at least once a day. This can be done using floss or any other method of your choice. The other thing you can do is consult with a dentist and dental hygienist to find solutions to any remaining effects of treatment. These can include saliva replacement therapy for dry mouth or custom fluoride trays for cavity prevention. So now we'll just talk a little bit about what side effects um, you can expect kind of from cancer treatment. These can include oral mucositis, dry mouth, fungal infection, dental cavities, trismus, osteoradionecrosis, and loss of taste. Some of these sound a little bit confusing and kind of intimidating, so let's go over them and some recommendations on how to best manage them. So first up, we have oral mucositis. The scientific term for this is just the breakdown of epithelial cells that lie in oral mucosa due to radiation or chemotherapy. This is basically just a fancy way to say that some tissues in your mouth, such as the insides of your lips or cheeks, can get very inflamed and actually start to break down. Kind of what is seen in the picture there. So what does this look like? Typically you will see a red, shiny, or swollen mouth and gums, blood in the mouth and sores on the gums and tongue, you may have difficulty swallowing or talking. It may feel dry. There may also be soft, whitish patches or pus in the mouth or on the tongue. Your saliva can become thicker and you may notice some mucus in the mouth. So let's talk about what we can do to manage this oral mucositis. So avoiding tobacco, alcohol, and carbonated drinks can help reduce oral mucositis. Staying hydrated and eating soft foods are also really good options. A salt and sodium bicarbonate mouth rinse 
can also help. You can make this by just mixing one teaspoon of each component into a pint of water. You can also try protecting agents such as Orobase. And of course, you can talk to your dentist or dental hygienist about a chlorhexidine rinse that could also help. And last but not least, there may be medications that your doctor could prescribe that, could, that could help. So next we'll talk about dry mouth. Um, this is caused due to lack of sal saliva flow that can occur because of damage to salivary glands during the radiation therapy. There are a couple different options that you can try to relieve dry mouth and we will go over three main ones here. So the first is xylitol, which is a sugar replacement that actually stimulates saliva flow and prevents decay. It comes in many different forms, such as gum, mints, melts, and candies. This can be a great option for people who already like to chew gum or suck on a mint throughout the day. Next up, we have biotin. It comes in an oral rinse, spray, gel, toothpaste, and lozenges to provide relief for dry mouth. And the third option we have here, uh, we have gels. So these can act as a saliva replacement to bring relief to dry mouth and in turn reduce the chance of getting cavities. Okay, so now we will talk about fungal infections. So receiving chemotherapy, sorry, receiving chemotherapy and radiation actually decrease your white blood cell count. So basically this alters your immune system. This means with a weakened immune system, you can become more susceptible to oral fungal infections. These fungal infections present as creamy white lesions, most commonly seen on the tongue and inner cheeks. So treatment for a fungal infection, um, it's definitely recommended to talk to a healthcare professional about an antifungal treatment to get rid of the infection, and that should hopefully do the trick. Next, we will talk about dental cavities. So as mentioned before, radiation and chemotherapy can greatly alter the, the state of the mouth. This can lead to changes in the salivary glands, which produce our saliva. Our saliva is very important as it helps rinse our mouths of sugar and bacteria and helps strengthen our teeth. Without it, it is much easier for cavities to form and at a very fast rate. This is why we recommend fluoridated toothpastes and different products. So we'll kind of go through three main um, possibilities for a high fluoride. These actually increase remineralization of the tooth surface, which helps in controlling the rate of dental decay. So we'll go through the different options here. First up, we have frequent applications of fluoride varnish by a registered dental hygienist or a dentist. Next, we'll talk about trays. So you can get custom trays made for your teeth that you can apply fluoride gels in and you can do this at home after you get the trays made. And last but not least, we'll talk about toothpaste. So as well, you can consider brushing one time per day with a high dose of fluoride toothpaste. So those will all definitely help decrease uh, the incidence of cavities. Next, we'll talk about loss of taste. So once treatment has begun, your sense of taste can become altered and you may actually lose your taste altogether. Thankfully, this should return back to normal two to four months after treatment if there is adequate salivary flow. Next, we'll talk about trismus, which is also known as locked jaw, and this can sometimes occur as a side effect. So what this is, is it's a very painful condition in the chewing muscles of the jaw that happens when these muscles become contracted and sometimes inflamed, and this, these prevent the mouth from fully opening. The good news is you can relieve some of this pain by just applying a warm, moist heat to the area. So that includes just using maybe a warm washcloth to loosen up these muscles. And the last side effect we'll talk about today is osteoradionecrosis. So this is a complication of radiation therapy in cancer treatment. Basically what happens is radiated bone becomes necrotic, meaning it begin, begins to die and, become, and can become exposed in the mouth. This can arise over five years of radiation. Some of the treatment for this condition includes antibiotic medication, a hyperbaric oxygen therapy, and surgery. 
Okay, so we kind of just gave you a quick snapshot of some important information, but of course, um, there's obviously more detailed information that can be found. Um, you can visit Canadian Cancer Society, BC Cancer, or Dental Hygiene Canada just to find out some more information on this topic. And here's our references. And so thank you everyone for watching, and I hope you're all staying safe and doing well. Have a great day.